Well, we praise the Lord for this uh, time that He has given us. Ano, na tayo po ay mag, uh, um, makapag-aral ng salita ng Diyos. Ano? Hindi lang tayo makapag-aral ng salita ng Panginoon, kung hindi po tayo din po ay makapag, uh, uh, makadulong ng ating mga prayer concerns ano, sa Panginoon. That's why sa ating mga viewers, ano, sa ating mga uh, kapatiran na nanonood no, sa ating uh, worship uh, ngayong hapon na ito, kung meron po kayong mga uh, katanungan or gustong uh, counseling, you know, or maybe mga prayer concerns, you know, just uh, drop your message. You can send us your uh, maybe private message sa uh, ating uh, Uh, IBCF uh, Hong Kong page or even in my in my uh, Facebook account or even dito ano sa ating uh, uh, link ngayon ano pwede kayong mag-message po diyan if you want uh, that we can pray for you we can help no? as of now no we can extend help uh, through our prayers and that is our one ministry <clears throat> na pwede naming gawin ano before you Okay, and we praise the Lord for that. Well, this afternoon, patuloy po tayong mag-aral ng salita ng Panginoon. Okay, and uh, we are talking about dito ngayon sa, sa libro ng Matthew. So, we are making and doing a uh, book uh, studies. And we are on the first book of the New Testament in the book of the Gospel of Matthew. And just a little reminder, ano? Uh, for us to understand yung book ni Matthew. Now, Matthew represents the Lord Jesus Christ now, in his book as the Messiah. Okay? As the God who, uh, who uh, was, uh, as the one who was fulfilled the promised uh, coming of the Messiah, in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? And he presented the Lord as the Messiah, as the Son of God, okay? as God himself. Okay, the fulfillment of the Old Testament prophecies because he was, uh, he is, you know, until now, the Lord Jesus Christ and will be, okay, uh, God and Lord himself. He is the Lord of nature. He is the Lord of the natural things. He is the Lord of the supernatural things. He is the Lord of sickness. He is the Lord who can forgive sins. He is the Lord who can uh, command the nature okay to obey him to stop and uh, to be at peace okay he is the god who is uh, able to provide and po yung makita natin ano sa kanya pong miraculous uh, feeding of the 5000 people and he is the lord jesus christ okay yun po yung presentation ng uh, ni matthew okay of the Lord Jesus Christ as the Lord. He is the Lord, indeed, uh, the Messiah himself. And uh, this afternoon, we will continue our study in this uh, book of Matthew, this beautiful book of Matthew, and we are now on chapter 15. Okay, Matthew chapter 15. Ito po yung pag natin ngayong hapon. Uh, and uh, I pray that this will be a blessing to us, okay, ngayong hapon, as we come to uh, the study of this gospel, okay, the gospel of Matthew. And uh, last uh, week, we talked about the last, uh, yung last Saturday na pinag-usapan natin about sa kay Kristo, ano? That he is, uh, we should fix our eyes on him because he is the Lord of nature. He is the Lord who saves and he is the Lord who heals. Okay? Siya po ang Diyos ng uh, kalikasan, ang Diyos na nagliligtas at uh, able na magligtas sa atin. At siya po yung Diyos na able na mag-heal sa atin. Ano man po yung ating mga karamdaman na ano, mga sakit sa buhay he can heal us according to his will okay but more so he came to heal us 
from our spiritual sickness. Okay? He heal us. He heals us from our sin. That is the greatest uh, um, healing na ginawa ni Kristo sa atin. He came to heal us from our sickness. At yan po ang ginawa ng Diyos ni Kristo sa atin when He came and when He died at the cross of Calvary. Now, knowing that Jesus Christ is the true Christ, not the true Messiah, and He Himself is God, He Himself is the Son of God and God Himself, okay? As we can see it in uh, the Gospel as presented by Matthew and John, you know, and even Mark you know, and Luke. Well, of course, they presented Jesus Christ in different uh, presentation like Luke you know, presented the Lord Jesus Christ as the Son of Man and uh, Mark presented the Lord Jesus Christ as servant and uh, here in Matthew he presented the Lord again as the Messiah okay and uh, we pray that this uh, truth that we will be studying ngayong hapon na ito will be a blessing to each one of us as we see the Lord Jesus Christ now, in our in our lives today, for example, but again, uh, just for our uh, reference and you know, for our study this afternoon, we will talk about uh, John or John Matthew chapter fifteen and verses number one to verse number twenty. So we will talk about Matthew chapter one. Our chapter 15 and verse number 1 to verse number 20. And we will talk about religious traditions that defile every human being. Religious traditions that defile us, that defile you and me, that defile men. Okay? Not all, let me say this, well, religious traditions are good. Okay? But let us check whether they are in accordance with the Word of God. Okay, again, let us uh, always remember every church, of course, every church has their own religious tradition. Okay, your church has religious traditions, my church has religious tradition. But how do we know that uh, the, the traditions that we are practicing? in our churches are true and according to the word of god okay because the problem is when our traditions are not in accordance with the word of god then we will have a problem like the people of israel like the jews during the time of the lord jesus christ okay religious traditions are good but they are good only when they are according to the Word of God. And uh, my challenge and my prayer is this, that as you are uh, watching and joining, replaying this uh, sermon later on, and even now, uh, let's have a double check. You know? Let us double check all our practices and uh, tradition in our churches. And let us ask our leaders or even have a personal inventory in our lives. Am I doing religious traditions that are contradicting to the word of God? Okay. And maybe to respond in humility to God and say, Lord, forgive me if I have practiced these religious traditions that, that's, that are not found in your word. You know? And uh, open my eyes to see more truth from your word so that I know, no? I know what religious traditions are not in accordance to your word. Now, during the time when the Lord Jesus Christ was uh, ministering in, in his Galilean ministry, we can see him in this um, text that we will be reading now. We can see that Jesus has this... Um, moment of confrontation with the Jews, with the religious leaders, okay? And, uh, oh, let me share that story with you, and let me just walk uh, with these verses. 
this afternoon and uh, let us find some truths and lesson from this. So religious traditions that defile men, that defiles maybe or defile you and me. And what are those? Well, let us hear from the word of God. So we will divide the story into two. The first one is the religious leaders who confronted the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. They uh, have this teaching. They have this teaching of uh, things that maybe uh, that will defile or defile men. Again, this talks about the religious uh, traditions that we are talking about. Okay? And then uh, the, the other uh, point, major point that we can see here later on, the teaching of the Lord Jesus Christ on what really things... What are really the things that defile us? Okay, so things that defile according to the teaching of the Jewish tradition. But let's look at also things that defile according to the teaching of the Lord Jesus Christ. And therefore teaching from the word of God. And that's why our purpose is this, to unveil, no? to uncover. Okay, to teach us what are the things that our religions are teaching us, okay, that are not in the Word of God. And that things defile us from the truth, you know, from the Word of God. So now let's look at verses number 1 to verse number 10. Let me just read the passage and uh, you can also read and join with me. Verse number 1. Then some Pharisees and teachers of the law came to Jesus from Jerusalem and asked, Why do your disciples break the tradition of the elders? They don't wash their hands before they eat. Now Jesus replied, And why do you break the command of God for the sake of your tradition? Verse number 4. For God said, Honor your father and your mother, and anyone who curses their father and mother is to be put to death. But you say that if anyone declares that what might have been used to help their father and mother is devoted to God, they are not to honor their father or mother with it. Thus you nullify the word of God for the sake of your tradition. You hypocrites, Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you. These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. They worship me in vain. Uh, their teachings are mer merely human rules. Okay, so may God add his blessing upon the reading of his words. And here is the teaching of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. He was teaching them on these things, okay, things that really uh, get the attention of the religious Jews. In fact, in verses number 1 to verse number 3, they were the religious leaders coming from Jerusalem. Now, the Lord Jesus Christ, maybe this uh, Jews or leaders, high priest, maybe as we can see in the story, they really were the authority at this time because they came to uh, the Lord Jesus Christ and confront the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, maybe because the, the priest of the synagogue in Galilee cannot handle the Lord Jesus Christ. And maybe they ask uh, help from Jerusalem. And so here comes the, the Jews, no? high priest from Jerusalem. One day when the Lord Jesus Christ was ministering to those people, they came and they confront the Lord Jesus Christ indirectly. Actually, they were not questioning about the Lord Jesus Christ. They were questioning about the habit of the disciples. What was the accusation? Well, they said that they don't wash their hands before they eat. Well, in, in a sense, that's really a hygiene. No? Washing hands, for example, when you before you eat, or even especially now when there is COVID-19, you need always to wash your hands, you know, uh, and uh, to uh, make sure that you have a 
uh, cleansed hands always so that uh, for your protection okay but these religious leaders actually the washing of the hands became also a tradition to the Jews even until this time okay and this is really what they they talk about and they were accusing the Lord Jesus Christ of this thing and they accused the disciples that they were not washing their hands when they were eating and in fact these traditions were the rabbinic interpretation of the old testament law that had accumulated over centuries uh, and they call it the the halakha okay halakha you know meaning if you will not wash your hands people will say to you halakha oh, no no that is not what it meant halakha is their uh, laws uh law that accumulates uh, other traditions and they put into it the writing and in jesus day most of these traditions were not yet in written form but later the rabbis complied them or compiled them into the mishnah or their also their law a written law in ad 135 to 2200 now for the pharisees these traditions carried almost as much authority if not more authority than the law itself. So the accusation of the Jews, for example, in the hand washing, okay, the disciples' hand washing was only a specific example of the larger charge on the disciples and, of course, of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, one entire tractate, uh, tractate in the Mishnah dealt with the proper hand washing procedure for ceremonial purposes naman, no? there were even requirements for for proper hand washing before meals since the ritual cleanliness of food was such an important matter to the people of israel to the jews okay during that time okay so they confronted the lord jesus christ not actually of indirectly not uh, against the lord jesus christ but against his disciples but they are really very wise, you know, and that, of course, you know, uh, so that when they accuse the disciples, of course, Jesus will be blamed because he is the uh, their master. Okay? He was the disciple. Now, Jesus responded in verses number three to verse number six, okay, with a, a, a counterattack, okay? He made a basic distinction between God's commandments and the Jews' tradition. And he charged his critics with breaking the former to keep the later. Okay, he they broke the former command. Okay, the the former laws, so that they can keep the the present laws. Okay, traditions that they have. Now the ordinances of the scribes were declared more precious and more binding importance than those of the holy scripture itself now look at that according to either shim he said this the their laws okay are more binding importance than the word of god than the holy scriptures and that's how they you know they venerate their religious traditions and in verse number four Jesus quoted Exodus chapter 20 and verse number 12 and chapter 21 and verse number 17. It says, Curses is too strong, okay? Or speaks of evil is better than uh, here na sinasabi ni Cristo. Now, so the, the, the Pharisees and the scribes, however, had evaded the spirit of the command, namely that children so, should take responsibility for their needy parents, Okay, and they have this rabbinic tradition. Okay, now in here, uh, what Jesus Christ meant here, the topo in in verse number four, he said this: For God said, "Honor your father and mother." Anyone who curses their father or mother is to be put to death. But this is what the religious leaders 
and their traditions have been teaching but you say that if anyone declares that what might have been used to help their father or mother is they voted devoted to god okay that was their teaching now jesus said the law taught a more fundamental duty to withhold from one's parents one uh, what would uh, what one could give to help them because of what the rabbis taught was greedy of hypocrisy okay the error was not so much on using the money for oneself or donating it for good cause but failing to give it to the needy parent now they have again misinterpreted the law and the commandments of moses of God through Moses okay the scenario was that well uh, I have given or I have uh, I have money I will use it uh, for God for example and then it's because uh, of the tradition that we have okay but Jesus was counteracting that when he said okay that failure to give or to help the needy parents is also disobedience to the law of God to the commands of God to the word of it so Jesus had taught his disciples to put commitment to him before his family also now he was the Messiah as we talk about and as such he had a right to demand such strong strong commitment for his disciples but the traditions of the law or the Jews did not carry that much authority. Moreover, the situation Jesus had addressed previously involved family members opposing his disciples, not his disciples opposing their family members. And that is what Jesus Christ was talking about here. He was counteracting the traditions, uh, the accusation of the Jews okay to him and uh, the uh, Jesus Christ was counter attacking them because this Jews also has or have misinterpreted the interpretation of uh, the law okay and uh, we are we are glad enough huh? in the left these people have known that I have uh, online worship and they keep on calling me but anyway uh lord let them know that i am on the online worship but here god has given us this privilege you know to uh uh know about the traditions now the jews at the time they are making their traditions according to uh, one scholar more or over the word of God and that's really the problem in the time of the Lord Jesus Christ okay and even the time uh, before the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ in fact he said in the verses that we, we, we read in verse number 6 to 10 Isaiah he said okay was true when he said this they honor these people honor me with their lips but their hearts are far from me they worship me in vain. Their teachings are merely human rules. And that's really what happening during the time of the Lord Jesus Christ. And how much more in our time today? Okay. People are churches, religions have this kind of um, traditions or human rules that governs them. Where is the word of God? Well, the word of God is not really the 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 standard for their faith and practice okay but their books they have their books they have their traditions that teaching them of the word of something and they obey it rather than the word of god well if your religion is teaching something that are not in the word of god and uh, traditions that maybe are formed written by their founders uh, religious uh, leaders before and now they are implementing it into your churches then those maybe religions or traditions are not in accordance to the word of god then you are not more than like the pharisees 
in the time of the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, even this, uh, even Christ you know, was against these religious traditions. Because these are the ones that are taking you know, the place of God and the word of God in the hearts of men. So what really are things that defile men? Again, the answer is things that would defile us are our religious practices, traditions that are not found in the word of God. So if your religious practices... Not found in the Word of God, meaning you are in a wrong, in a wrong place. You are in a wrong religion. Okay, you are in a wrong group. Uh, for example, now just to cite, okay, we have so many religious practices around us, and I'm sure, you know, as you are joining with me in worship, you can enumerate so many religious practices and traditions that are not in the Word of God. For example, the worship of idols. Okay? The Bible is vocal with the worship and against the worship of idols. God Himself has prohibited it in His Word. And some other religions are teaching it and say, well, we are not actually worshiping idols. We are just doing this, you know. It's just like you know, uh, if you have your if you have your uh, loved one, for example, someone you love, you put it in your wallet. Okay, you are not worshiping him or her. You just you know, uh, remembering him or something like that. But the question is, if that is the real picture of your loved ones, okay? But many people are worshiping something. In the like the image of God, but actually they are not God. Okay, they are not the image, the true image of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, and maybe you are worshiping something that is not Christ. Okay, like for example, the black Nazarene. Is Jesus black? No, he is not black. The Word of God says he is a Jew. Okay, although the Jew said he is not a Jew. But the moment they read the Word of God, they will say, well, Jesus Christ is indeed the lineage of David. Now, I do not know and I cannot understand this. I do not know if you understand why people in the Philippines worship the Black Nazareth. Okay? Well, because it's a tradition. And that is, my, that is our point. Look at tradition. If your tradition contradicts the word of God, then do not do, okay? Reject that kind of tradition that you have been long practicing and you have maybe been long enslaved by that kind of religious tradition because that practice defiles your life. That practice defiles your what? Your spiritual life. And that is what the Lord Jesus Christ talks about here. Well, maybe people will say, and they, they will get angry with uh, those people who are teaching about, no, do not worship idols, do not worship the black Nazarene, and they will get, uh, what? They will get uh, discouraged. And, uh, well, in fact, the truth will always discourage those who are in the wrong side do those who are not in the side of god and actually the story if we will continue the story the jews who confronted the lord jesus christ according to the disciples they were discouraged because of the teaching of the lord jesus christ and that's really quite you know that's really normal when you speak the truth of god People will get mad on you. People will get discouraged and they will say, well, respect our faith. Well, with all due respect, we respect your faith. With all due respect, we respect the faith of each one of us. But we are talking about true faith. If true faith talks about, you know, worshiping God alone, will you still worship idols? Okay? But the reality is, 
the God of this world, the Prince of this world, the Prince of Darkness, has been blinding the eyes of the people of the world. So that whenever you speak to them the truth, they will get angry, get mad, discouraged, because we are talking about the truth of God. So the religious leaders, <clears throat> they confronted the Lord Jesus Christ, <clears throat> and they were also counteract, counteracted by the Lord Jesus Christ by interpreting to them the true meaning of the law that God has given to Moses. So again, religious traditions are good. Okay. Good in the sense that they are in accordance to the Word of God. Okay. Like for example, well, uh, let me talk about it later on. But the thing is, this is a challenge for us. Whatever things that maybe you have in your life, religious practices that you have, okay, always look at the Word of God. Because the Word of God will always tell us whether the traditions and religious practices that we are doing are according to the Word of God. If not, then the challenge is, do not practice them. Keep yourself away from any religious practices that is not found in the Word of God. Okay? Now, number two that we can see here. So we saw about the religious leaders teaching on what defiles men. Okay? And for them, for the religious leaders, the, the Jews in the time of the Lord Jesus Christ, they were teaching that the law, the religious traditions that they have, uh, they have received from their, you know, from generation to generation, handed down to them, is more authoritative than the Word of God. And that's why they were practicing even the washing of the hands. And they confronted the Lord Jesus Christ as they were coming to Him in Galilee. So the religious leaders teaching on what defiles, what defiles men? If you do not obey traditions, that defiles you. If you do not obey what the, the, what the Jewish tradition is teaching you, if you do not obey it, that defiles you. Now, let's look at what defiles, really, according to the teaching of the Lord Jesus Christ. So, for the Jews, the thing that defiles is disobedi disobedience to the law, the traditions of their religions. But look at the Lord Jesus Christ. How about the Lord Jesus Christ? What is the teaching of Christ when it comes to what really defiles men? Okay? Now, let's look at verse number 10 to verse number 20. Verse number 10, let me just read again on the passage. Jesus called the crowd to him and said, well, maybe because uh, the Jews already have uh, left and they called this, this people, the crowd, okay, and even his disciples, listen and understand. This was the explanation of Christ. What goes into someone's mouth does not defile them. Now, remember, the Jews said, well, you eat, you did not wash your hands, and then you uh, eat the food, and uh, maybe there are germs, and it defiles your body, it defiles your life. But Jesus said this, look at this, listen and understand, what goes into someone's mouth does not defile them. Now, meaning, food, or even the tradition of washing your hands, okay? Or even if you eat, you know, well, maybe you will get infected if you your hands are um, dirty, for example. But Jesus is making a point here that it is not actually the physical things, you know, that defiles men, but his, what? Spiritual condition. Okay, so it is not someone's mouth that uh, someone's mouth does not defile them, but what comes out from their mouth that is what defiles them. Now that's a simple teaching of Christ. So it is not 
the thing that comes in that defiles men. It is something that goes out from the mouth that defiles men. Okay, not the food, but something coming out from the very seat of man's life. Then the disciple came to him and asked, Do you know that the Pharisees were offended when they heard this? Now, this is really the problem, you know. Those people who are religious, filled with these religious traditions, when they heard about the true teaching of the Word of God, the Scriptures from the Son of God, the best response that they can ever receive or do is to be offended. And that's really true, you know. To each one of us. In fact, when someone is uh, going to touch other religious practices, you know, the most that you can have is to be what? To have war, you know, to have uh, skirmishes you know, with those groups. Okay? Why? Well, because you touch with their, uh, you uh, talk about the religious practices and traditions. Okay? The thing is, if we will not confront false religious traditions with the, with the Word of God, who will teach them the truth? Okay? Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Okay? If, you are, if your religious tradition is against the Word of God and you heard someone who teaches about the true tradition that God has given us through teaching of the word that God has given us and you know the truth and as the Holy Spirit works in your hearts the Father is working in your heart the saying is true that you will be set from the truth set free from the false religious traditions okay you know the truth and the truth will set you free from any religious traditions that are not found in the Word of God. So meaning, the Word of God is our final authority of our faith and practice. Nothing more, nothing less. Okay? If your religious traditions are not found in the Word of God, better reject that religious traditions and follow what God said in His Word. Okay? Bahala na kung matiwalag ka sa grupo na hindi naman totoo. Bahala na kung, no, di ba? If you know the truth and you want to follow the truth, okay? This follow, unfollow those uh, groups or people or do not anymore come and worship and join their worship because in the first place, they are not teaching the truth of God. And that's really very important. And when the Lord Jesus Christ was teaching the truth, the Jews, the religious leaders, they were what? According to the disciples, they were offended. Well, someone has said it's good to offend them by the truth of God and with the truth of God. Okay? Meaning God is really working in their hearts by his grace verse number 13 to 15 he replied every plant that my heavenly father has not planted will be pulled up by the roots leave them they are blind guides if the blind lead the blind both will fall into a pit peter said explain the parable to us now this is really the reality of it when your religion and those who are teaching traditions that are against the Word of God, like the Pharisees in the time of the Lord Jesus Christ, Jesus called them what? Blind. Okay? And if you are, you know, you're wise, will you follow a blind leader? Well, of course not. Right? If you are not blind, Okay? You will not follow a blind leader. Why? 
Because if you follow the blind leader, where are you going? And, for example, it is true that only blind follow the blind. In the same way, same true to us and to our lives spiritually, Jesus said, well, those who are not following my teachings, they are spiritually blind like the Jews, the Pharisees, the high priests in the time of the Lord Jesus Christ. And they are teaching this people of Israel and those uh, members of their congregation, for example, they were also blind and they will end up into the pit, sabi ni Cristo. Okay? And that's a description of Christ. Anyone who does not obey and follow the word of God, he is like a blind man who will lead other people into the pit. Now, many leaders are not obeying the word of God. They are bringing their people to the pit. And their, their members do not know them. Why? Because they are also blind. That's the reality. Okay? That's the reality of it. Many people, and that's why it's good to know your leaders. Are your leaders uh, blind or not? Okay? Now, how can we know that our, our leaders are blind? If they are not teaching the true teachers or teaching of the word of God. If they are not teaching what God has said in His Word, they are blind. If they are teaching re religious traditions that are not found in the Word of God, they are blind. And those people who follow them, they are also blinded by their teaching. And the end result of that, they will all fall into a pit. And later on, of course, the finality of it, they will be all cast into the lake of fire because they are all blinded from the truth. And that's what Jesus Christ said. And Jesus said to, or Peter said to the Lord, well, explain us. Well, this is what Jesus said. Are you still so dull? Jesus asked them, don't you see that whatever enters the mouth goes into the stomach and then out of the body? But the things that come out of a person's mouth come from the, the heart and this defile them. Now, what defiles us? Things that coming out from our hearts. And that is the teaching of the Lord Jesus Christ. In verse number 19, 20, For out of the heart come evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false testimony, slander, those or this are what defile a person. But eating with unwashed hands does not defile them. Now, what defiles men? Religious traditions. Religious traditions that tells us that we should do this and we shall do that so that we can have, uh, we can gain the approval of God. We do this and we do that so that we can, you know, uh, go to heaven. Okay? And yet, still do what we need to do, what our lives, our, our life wanted to do. Like, you know, people can still, well, people can be so religious, obeying the religious traditions, Offering, for example, any kind of offering, donation to the church, and uh, all, name it, they can give it because they have money, they have all the resources, they can give to the church because the church teaches that if you do this, you will gain the approval of God and you will have your merit and you will go to heaven. And yet, even though they are giving so many things to the church, the lives, the lives that they are living, they are just, you know, stealing. Okay? They are just sexual, immoral. They are adultery. Adulterer, they are murderer. Okay? They are slanderer. Why? Well, because the religious tradition teaches them that if they want to give something, they can gain merit to God. 
Okay? And that teaching defiles a person from the truth because that person is not being taught correctly with the Word of God. And that's what Jesus Christ talks about. What defiles men is the false teaching of the religious leaders of certain religions. False teaching that they are just good whenever they do this and give this to the church without teaching their right relationship with God. And of course, that's the fault of religious leaders. That's why we need to, to, to know whether our pastors or priests or ministers are teaching what God has said in His Word. Because when we do, when we do that, when we know it, then we know that we are in the truth. So let me just, in closing, okay, so Jesus, again, let me just recap on this. Now, the Jews came to the Lord Jesus Christ, confronted Him and say, well, you are not uh, practicing what our law is saying. Okay? And you are guilty. And Jesus Christ said, well, it is not the, the hand washing, okay? Or it is not because you are not washing your hand that defiles you and make you guilty. But it is, uh, it is the traditions, okay? What is being taught by your traditions that is one that defile a certain person because what you teach is what other people also is believing okay not even not even minding of their relationship with god and that's why they keep on sinning against god and that's really defiles them the sin the practices that they are practicing against god that really defiles them now the bottom line is this, as we learn some truths from the Word of God, let me share you this uh, three lessons before we close. Number one, the Word of God must be above any religious traditions. Okay? The Word of God, the Bible, okay, this is, should be and must be above any other religious traditions. Someone has said, gave a name to the Bible. He said, Bible is the basic instruction before leaving earth. This is God's instruction, not our traditions. Okay? If you want to live a moral life, you need not actually traditions. You just need the Word of God. Because everything that is written here is for the good, okay, morally and spiritually, of anyone. In fact, all of our codes of conduct, I believe, is found in the Word of God. So this is a complete set of code of ethics that a person can practice and become what? Morally good. Okay? Without even, first of all, God working okay, in the hearts of men. Then men, if he practice what God, the Bible of God said, he will become morally good. Okay? But fall short of the kingdom of God. God needs someone huh? to change him by his power, of course, as he reads his word, so that he can both be both spiritually and morally good in the sight of the society and the sight of God. But the thing is, the lesson is this. The lesson of the story, the word of God must be above any other religious traditions. If your religion is teaching the Bible is under your religious tradition, under your religious book, then your, relig your religion is a false religion. Your teachers are blind, and you too are blinded by the Word or by the religious tradition from the Word of God. Now, maybe you ask, how can I be delivered from my blindness, Pastor? Reject, keep yourself from the practices of your religion and follow the teaching of the Word of God. Because after all, one day 
you will be judged by God not according to your religious traditions, but according to the book that God will open one day in Revelation chapter 20. You will be judged not according to your religious traditions and books, but you will be judged according to what God has said in His Word. So better obey the Word of God, because in this you will be judged by God Himself. So, religious traditions is nothing compared to the Word of God. Although we say that religious traditions are good, if they are according to the Word of God. So, the Word of God must be above any other religious traditions. Number two, lesson we can get here. The Word of God will always offend those who are not God's people, God's children. Okay? Those who are in the wrong side will always be offended when the Word of God is being taught. Okay? They will always say, respect our faith, respect our views, respect our practices. Well, with all due respect, we respect. But we want also to share the truth <clears throat> that comes from the Word of God. And those who are not God's people, those who are not God's children, in fact, Jesus said God has planted His own plant. Meaning, those who are not God's plant will always be offended with the Word of God. Okay? Those who are the children of the devil, as Jesus said in John chapter 8 and verse number 44, the children of the devil, those who are blinded by sin, by the, the prince of this world, Satan himself, will always be offended with the truth that comes from the Word of God. Are you offended of God's Word? Are you offended when the Word of God is being taught? Well, maybe because you are blinded, maybe because you are not a child of God, maybe you are not God's child. Okay? Paul said, this, you need to examine yourself whether you are in the faith. Because if you are in the faith, you will not be offended. Number three, the last. I think last thing that I am done. Number three lesson that we can get here. The heart is the center of everything that defiles. Our heart is the center of everything that defiles. The heart, as uh, the prophet Jeremiah said, the heart is wicked above all, uh, all uh, above anything else. Who can discern it? Of course, God Himself. And as long as your heart is sinful and wicked, regardless of how religious you are, regardless of how you practice religious traditions and practices, without God changing your heart, you will always have this kind of problem. You will always have a spiritual problematic heart. So do you have problems spiritually in your heart? Yes. Maybe the problem uh, is visible when we diagnose it personally, when we are immoral, when we are sinning, when we are, as Jesus said, um, we are slanderer, we, we have all of these sins, name it, we have it. Okay? Because actually, that is the reality of it. All of us are sinners in the sight of God. And maybe the question is, how can I be delivered from this present condition, Pastor? How can I be delivered from this wicked heart? Well, God has made a way for us. We cannot make our way. God made a way. He made a way for us so that we can be delivered from a wicked uh, heart, from a wicked life. And that is only when He sent His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. When Jesus Christ came, He came and He died for us. He gave Himself for us at the cross of Calvary so that anyone who believed in Him, anyone who, who received Him as their Lord and as their Savior and asked forgiveness of their sins, they will be forgiven. They will be opened from their spiritual blindedness. And they will find and understand the truth that comes from the Word of God. 
Are you spiritually blind? Today, the good news is, God can heal you from your spiritual blindness. And that is possible when you accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. For us, maybe, who are followers of the Lord Jesus Christ, maybe the challenge is this, you know, God has already cleansed us from our sins and He gave us a cleansed heart. Let us continue to live a life, you know, that encourages other, others, life that encourages other believers, okay? See to it that there is nothing that come out, comes out from your heart and from your life that defiles other people. Let your life be a blessing. Let your life be a life uh, that is uh, Christ-like. Because by doing so, we are demonstrating the love of God, the love of the Lord Jesus Christ to others. May the Lord God bless His words. Let us pray. Our gracious God and loving Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for your word. Thank you for giving us this truth. Things that defile us are not the things that is being dictated by our religious traditions. But things that are coming from our wicked life, wicked heart. And that can only be given a solution when someone is coming to Christ, believing in the Lord Jesus Christ, accepting Him as their Lord and Savior. <clears throat> While your heads are bowed and as your eyes are closed, maybe you're joining, watching with us, or watching with this sermon later on, and you are not sure whether you are uh, spiritually blind or not. You are not sure whether you are living a life that is defiled or not. Well, in order for you to be sure, and it's good to be sure, and that is to know the truth. And the truth is the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ came. He gave Himself at the cross of Calvary. He died for us so that anyone who believes in Him, anyone whom the Father has drawn to Christ, will have eternal life as they believe in Christ. Would you like to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ? And accept Him as your Savior. If you do, just call upon His name and say, Lord Jesus, I know I am a sinner. My heart is wicked. My life is defiled because of sin. But thank you because you died at the cross, gave yourself for us, for me. Thank you for the salvation that you are offering me. I accept that offer of salvation. I accept Christ as the Lord of my life. Forgive me of my sins. Come into my life. Accept you as my Lord and make me the kind of person that's like you, like the Lord Jesus Christ. Or maybe you're a follower of Christ. question is, are you living a defiled life? You already have been cleansed by Christ. Live a life that gives glory to God. Let your life demonstrate the glory of Christ. And maybe that is also a commitment for you to make. Lord, help me to live my life to demonstrate the glory of Christ to others. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for giving us this privilege, Lord, today to be reminded of your word, to be taught by your word, the truth that comes from your scriptures, from your holy scriptures. Bless this truth in our hearts, Lord. Bless every decision that will be made by those people who will be joining, who will be watching this later on, and even those who made this decision in the internet. Bless them, our God. I pray for blessing even our Saturday family. Bless them, Lord, this week as they work. Protect them from the evil one. Bless their families in the Philippines and continue to uh, make their lives also a channel of blessing, uh, blessings wherever they are. As they serve in their family, as they serve their employers, wherever they go this week, may you will bless them, our God. Thank you, Lord. Bless our online uh, Bible studies, prayer after our worship this afternoon. We pray that you will continue to work and bless. Protect our Saturday group as they are uh, outside and uh, protect them until they, they uh, again come to the respective places tonight. Thank you, oh God. We give you all the praises and thanksgiving. We pray all of these things in the name and for the glory of Christ. Now to him who is able to keep you from falling, to present you faultless before the presence of his glory 
with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forevermore. Amen and amen. Well, again, thank you so much for joining with me in our uh, online worship uh, this Saturday. Okay? Saturday online worship. And uh, we're glad that you, you join with us. And if this sermon, this online ministry has been a blessing to you, Okay, please uh, don't uh, hesitate you know, to share this to others, to your families, loved ones, chat groups, and even share it in your timeline so that they also will be uh, blessed and others also will come to know the Lord. Okay? And if you want to uh, know more about Christ, learn more about Him, you can join and go to our IBCF Ministries a YouTube channel natin and even in our IBCF Hong Kong FB page so that you can also watch our other sermons there if you missed some sermons. Again, thank you so much. This has been your uh, host, Pastor on our live uh, worship online, Pastor also Salas of the International Baptists Filipino in Hong Kong, saying thank you so much for joining with us. Have a good and godly afternoon and godly week ahead of you. Good afternoon, everyone.